Calm Down with Aaron and Carissa is a production of iHeartRadio. Listen, I understand the struggle from the short to the long because I was battling it for so long. Mm-hmm. I would let it get to a certain length. And I'm like, okay, I think I can put in extensions and I'm not going to have that shelf. Lo and behold, the shelf shows up. It always appears. And I'm going to tell you, it ain't a top shelf. Welcome to the Calm Down <laughs> Podcast, everybody. Shelf. We better um, see a lot of top shelf from Steve Stamkos and Nikita Kucherov tonight, people. Anywho, let's go. Back to your intro. We have so many things to discuss with you. Renee, I have known you for how many years? A lot of years, whatever. A lot of years, years yeah. A, a lot of years. That's a really great way to summarize um, <laughs> our relationship. You are, you no longer live in Las Vegas. You moved to Cincinnati. You are a mom. You are a, you wrote a cookbook. Fuck, I can't even cook. You are a television host. You're a presenter. You're a TV person. All the things. We don't have time for the intro, but you're amazing. You've Very always busy. been one of those women in this industry that have been so <clears throat> supportive of other women, as Aaron and I can attest to, that not everyone is like that. So we are you. thrilled to have you on here. And also, it is hard to get Colin Coward to love anyone because he's very <laughs> opinionated on things, as we know. Colin Coward is obsessed with you. You can listen to her podcast on the volume uh, as well. But you, there's a myriad of things that you do. But Colin Coward's endorsement, I think, is number one on that list. I'll take it because Colin is um, not always the easiest guy to read. I'm like, does he like mm-hmm. me? Are we mm-hmm. best friends? I'm trying. You know, I always try to work on it. And it's from a distance because I don't get to see him in person that often. I do my podcast from right right here. Um, Mm -hmm. So I don't get to hang out with Colin and get to rub elbows with him all that often. But when I do, I'm really trying to like work in the nook and crannies. As Aaron can attest to, he cornered me in the hallway at Fox and was like, I'm obsessed with Renee. I love Renee. She's amazing. Do you know how many Instagram followers she has? I was like, Colin, you're on Instagram? And then we see those selfie videos and we all know. But yes, (laughs) when he's smoking his cigar and it's like that awkward angle up the nose, Colin, I didn't know I needed to like be introduced to all your follicles in your nose hair. (laughs) Renee, what's something about Colin Cowherd that people uh, love him, hate him, don't know about him? You know what? I would actually say his generosity. So as much as like we've not got to spend like that much time together in person, I've honestly not really had many people through my career that I felt like really bestowed some wisdom. This Mm. man knows how to drop some knowledge. And I feel like anytime we've got to like hang out, just like his perspective, I mean, obviously he's been so successful through his own career, but even talking to him about women in this game. I mean, from him being able to work with you, Carissa, working with Beatle, working with Joy Taylor, he has worked with so many amazing women and it feels like he's really championed a lot of them throughout Mm -hmm. their careers. I think he has a great eye for the talent that he wants to work with. Um, So yeah, for me, it's more so like, like that, being able to like have someone that I'm like, oh, I think I can like really learn something from the Mm -hmm. things that Obviously, I mean, God, you look at the man's career and what he's been able to do, but not everyone's always like willing to like shell out that information or like want to mm-hmm, hang yeah. out and like really get into some of those things. So I've, I've always really appreciated that from the times that we've got to spend together. He is rich, rich. Oh, my God, isn't he? How do I get a little <laughs> bit of that? That's the you know, the the business part. I was going to say, Renee, he's always advocated. I remember living in Connecticut and he's like, I own part of this wine store and I'm an investor in this jerky, turkey, bur- whatever the <laughs> hell he does. It's like, what, what's going on? But it is. And so you're a woman who does a lot of different things. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you know, I just mentioned the cookbook. I can't cook. It's not my thing. <laughs> Me neither. Um, or I host, need- which I can't wait to hear all about this from you. Yes, exactly. So your messy in the kitchen is is cooking something that you've always done. Is that where does that background um, come from? So come yeah, from? I, I, I mean, I've always just loved cooking. I love being in the kitchen. I'm sure. I mean, I guess you guys can't attest to this if you don't want to be in the kitchen. But when you're on the road that often, you're ordering up the club sandwich yes. and like the Caesar salad, whatever you're getting from the room service. I got a fruit bowl. Both. I got a fruit bowl. <laughs> yes, Jesus, like... that's a cornucopia of fruit over there. <laughs> Thanksgiving's <laughs> fresh. See, Vegas, they serve some good things up every now and then. Um, but for me, it was like, I feel like I really delved into it more through my time with WWE. I'd finally mm-hmm. get home and I'm like, oh my God, I'm like in my own kitchen. Yeah. I can cook my own food. Like I love going to the grocery store. It's like one of my favorite things to do. I love mm. a little aisle perusing. But it's oh. funny because like often when we go to the grocery store, my husband and I go together and I'm like, oh my God, this guy, like he takes off when we get in there. And then we <laughs> end up he like, going? <laughs> like it's, <laughs> he goes to get the deli meats. He goes to get the bread. 
he he's in the ice cream. He's big into ice cream right now. So we like separate, but he's like, he wants to just get it done. He wants to be mm-hmm. in and out where I'm like, no, I want to like, I want to take my time. I want to see what other si- like spices, marinades, oh, what's going God. on at like the, the fish counter. No. I love spending my time there. Aaron, you hate it. Why do you hate it? It's like Home Depot to me. I'm <laughs> nervous. I yeah. don't know like, like where Home things Depot, are, yeah. but see, that's because... I am now trying to start, and Chris is doing this too. We're trying to get better at things we kind of aren't that great at. Mm-hmm. So, you know, being domestic, making meals, so forth. So I, I like, I'm a note taker. Mm-hmm. I uh, I was going to write, what are some things, and, and I'm excited to read the book. I'm going to read it on the way home tonight uh, from <laughs> Vegas. What are some things that girls like Chris and I, who aren't home very often, but want to start improving and be healthy and eat well and make great stuff that you need to start getting at the grocery store? What are our go-tos? Okay, so I will preface this by saying my cookbook's definitely not like super healthy. I like to cook like the bad stuff. Not like bad stuff, bad stuff, but like I want the pastas. Like my favorite thing with cooking is like I want to pour a glass of wine. I want to put on some music and I want to like spend some time in there, which honestly in the last like year, so my baby just turned a year and I've been like- Nora, baby Nora. Sweet baby Nora. Oh my God. So sweet. What's what's her Where's her name uh, derived from? My okay. grandmother was Eleanor. So we gave, oh. we went, we went Nora from, from Eleanor. Yeah. Oh I my God. That. She's just, she's delicious. But I feel like, fe- like, you know, eating has been more of like, all right, necessities. Not only do I need to like get my life together and like try to attempt to get my like body back in shape. So it's just been like kind of oh, the basics. Shut up. By the way, you posted that picture and this is one of many reasons I love you. The self-deprecation is amazing. You're like, these shorts are working hard. (laughs) Uh, When you were like, I I think you were telling you, you must have been like having that Nora like the next second, right? I was like a house. Huge. Did you like being pregnant? Were you one of those women's like, I love you? Yeah, I was annoying and I loved it. So did I, you I think you would going into it? Did I you think did. you would? I did oh. think that I would like it. So I was basing this off of, and everyone kind of says this, that your pregnancy is a lot like what your mom's was. And my mom had like pretty easy pregnancy. So I got into it. And like, I, I know I feel like annoying that I was that woman that like, I felt great. I worked out the whole time. Like, I just felt like I was like thriving. I loved it. I, I actually like miss being. It's fun being huge for a little bit of just like your body. I do that. Changes. I don't have a baby. It's fun. Yeah. Ask, you want to be ask, a surrogate? Ask my jeans. Yeah. yeah I know, right. Putting honestly. It out there. Honestly. Um, but yeah, I, I will say, though, I mean, it took me a long time to get pregnant, too. It was like a whole ordeal where it took like it was like over a year where I kept you know, you start like kind of trying then it's like, oh, wait, what's happening here? Went to yeah. the fertility clinics. We're doing all the tests, everything. I had the IVF at home and then uh, I left my job and I got pregnant that month. It was crazy, crazy, crazy. So let's, so yeah. let's go back to that for a second. Renee. So when you made that shift and you made that decision to leave, let's go back even further for a second. Yeah. Sorry. You I like totally husband. deviated off of what your original no. question <laughs> By the way, <laughs> hairs. have you met us? You think we give a shit? Yeah, exactly. I was talking about ripping the hair follicles out of the back of my head because this r- fucking Rapunzel mane's been in here and I can't believe I all was your talking hair is real. about Colin's follicles in his nose. So we're good. We're good. Okay, um, good. The I know because the last time I saw your hair was super short and I'm so fucking jealous of it's that. It's from you the and prenatals. I literally started taking prenatals and I was like that Barbie with like that crank arm where her hair, her yeah. hair just starts growing. It's nuts. Uh, I take prenatal natal, uh, vitamins and the hair on my chin grows. But oh, not my I get those head. too. I love a good chin Fuck. hair. Wow. Let's take them all out. Okay, Terrible. so let's go, ba- <laughs> let's go back for a second. So WWE, how did you get into it? How did you get involved? You met your husband there. I need the whole background and story for everyone that doesn't know. The whole kit and caboodle. Um, okay, so yeah. I was working in Toronto and I was working for um, a sports network there. And mm-hmm. I started working there because they... It had like a comedic take on sports. And I was like, oh, that's something I could maybe do. Like I was not that like behind the desk, like sports center. Like I would die. I I just could, I would yeah, do none a terrible of us are. job. Yeah. Yeah. You guys get it. I would do a really bad job at that. Um, so I was doing that. And then my boss at the, at the time was like, hey, they had the rights to WWE in Canada. And they're like, hey, do you want to host this after show for Raw? And I was like, yeah, sure. So instantly I'm like, oh my God, what do I need to know about wrestling? Like yeah, I, I was going to say, did you know so anything? Long. 
I, I mean, I knew for like a little bit from when I was younger and watched it, but then I was like, oh God, I got to like some, and you guys know, I mean, it's like, yeah. like anything that like fan base is so intense that like you cannot, you can't no, mispronounce fuck the up. name. That was like me with hockey. Yeah. 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 I didn't know yeah. dick about hockey. And I was like, uh, reading literally hockey for dummies because they'll pick up real quick if you <laughs> oh, yeah. are next. Oh yeah, yeah. They sniff you out real, real mm-hmm. quick. Um, so I was doing that show and it was great. I had such a good time and that was like a great way for me to like dip my toe into that world. And then as my contract was, uh, coming to an end there and like the, the whole company was being sold, all these things, blah, blah, blah. I was like, I want to make my jump down to the U S I want to figure out what I'm going to go do. So, um, this is where we kind of come into play because I had come into audition for, um, for Sports Nation mm-hmm. and loved it, had a great time, thought for sure that's the thing, that's going to be it, that's where I'm headed. And then that at the end of that week, WWE brought me in for an audition and I bombed it. It was not good. Oh, I, no, like, why? Well, what, what did you, what do? do you mean? How did yeah. you bomb it? It was a full day. So I get there and like, you know, you're like meeting all of, like the producers, meeting the executives, blah, 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 like walking through the buildings, figuring everything out. So they had me do like, you know, like a post show style kind of thing. That was fine. I was like, OK, this is my wheelhouse. I can do this. They had me jump in and do commentary. And I was like, what? Ooh, like ooh. so over my head, not a clue what I was doing, like blessings to the man that was uh in the booth with me trying to do it. He's probably like, get this <laughs> chick out of here. Um, <laughs> I've then had a they, few like, of those. <laughs> gave me like uh it's like a battery charger or something and they're like sell this to me and i like i was like what I, what are you doing like I this know. is insane it was like full on like boot camp sink yeah. or swim so i honestly didn't really think i did a great job and i was like oh okay well we'll see what happens i don't know i'm probably going to go do this thing at espn anyways um and then Carissa thompson enters the picture and then they uh, gave it to me by <laughs> default numbers never lie got canceled and they're like this bitch has got a year left on her contract so we got to put her somewhere that's, that's what oh happened oh my there. gosh no i remember like being at home I've told this story before on like uh, on my show and like maybe some other places, but I was like at home being like, cool, I'm going to go do this other thing. I'm going to go to ESPN, blah, blah, blah. And it was like the episode that Michelle Beadle was leaving. They shoot her out the can and I'm like, oh, that was a nice little send off. <laughs> and then this car pulls up and these like heels pop out. And I'm like, wait, who's this? What's <laughs> happening? What's going on? <laughs> What's going on? Again, by default. No, not, no, no. Not I because, mean, yeah. listen, you are so fantastic at, everything you do like god you're so you were so great on that show and you're so amazing in all the things that you do uh but it was that moment that i was like oh my gosh okay so that's not happening and then wwe the contract came through with them and i was like yeah okay let's go and do that let's go and i had no idea what i was going to do there not a clue i was like am i doing the show like i was doing in toronto am i going to be doing like a a studio show what am i going to be doing um and then yeah i mean i ended up doing a million things there. I started off hosting this show, Vintage Collection, which was like all old school wrestling uh, that I was hosting with me and Gene Okerlund, who's just like an absolute class act, uh, best man ever, loved him. Um, And then I ended up going on the road, doing backstage interviews was kind of the thing I started dipping my toe into, then hosting panel shows for for all the pay-per-views, joining Total Divas, doing a reality show. Yeah, and wait, then- we need to, that, that's, uh, that's where Aaron, <laughs> insert Aaron. Go. There we go. Well, no, that's when I started hearing about you because when you, I would get your name tagged on to my name at Twitter, like she's the wrestling Aaron uh, Andrew, yes, and I was yes. like, what's going on? <laughs> what's happening? I was like, am I screwing up something here? So yeah, I kept seeing your name everywhere. And I was like, is this bitch talking about me? Like, what's going on? And no, (laughs) you weren't. But it was like, everybody's like, oh, she's the wrestling version. So I was like, okay, I see you. So Total Divas. (laughs) So funny. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So we get brought in to do Total Divas, which was like great. But it was also a little weird or like awkward, I guess, for me, because I was the only girl on there that wasn't a wrestler. So I'm like, what am I, I like, what am I bringing to the table? What are like, you're my hot, story you're lines going to be? Yeah, you're bringing everything. Yeah, we got it. Trying to bring I'll everything. Tell you what you're bringing. Trying to bring the party. Um, And then, so my husband now, we were dating at the time, but we were doing the show. We were on it together. And it was just like weird. So my husband's wrestling character, especially at the time, was like this like crazy lunatic. So that was sort of the essence on the show where he's still this like wacky, crazy guy. And I'm like, why is he so crazy all the time? So it was like this weird dynamic that's like not actually what our dynamic is. Um, But it was a lot of fun. I mean, shit, you just get to like hang out with your friends. They keep the champagne flowing. You go on these great trips. The only thing that like 
that I had really a hard time with was just being mm. mic'd up all the time. Having a mic pack on you all day long and you're like on on vacation, like you're in a bathing suit. Like, yeah. You just put this on your bikini and it's like sagging your pants down. It's like that. Was did you guys have part. a clause in your contract? Because we did when I danced on Dancing with the Stars. It was kind of the same thing. You wore a mic pack all day. So if you're hooking up, you're fighting. If you're cussing out the producers, it's on tape. But we had it in the contract. As soon as I'm in the potty, it, the mic pack is allowed to be off. So that's where Maxim <laughs> and I would fight. <laughs> or like bitch about the show being like <laughs> Nicole Scherzinger. You know, of course she's gonna win it. Fuck yeah, this. You know, right. so like that's not fair. The bathroom. So yeah, could you take it off in the potty or no? Um, yeah, I I don't really remember there being any like you can do X, Y, and Z. Like it was a little more like loose in terms yeah. of that. Cause there'd be okay. times that we'd be shooting and then near the end of the day, like as the cameras start like pulling out, pulling out, pulling out, we're like at dinner or shooting the shit and whatever. Am I allowed to swear on here, by the way? Yeah. Oh, okay, I think I said fuck yeah, like 10 are. times. Great, yeah. <laughs> great, great, great. Um, yeah. Calm down. Uh, Renee. Calm down. Everybody calm down. Um, then uh, can you not swear on the volume? Are you guys classy oh over my, there? No, I swear probably too much. I think it actually freaks people out because they're so used to me not swearing on television. They're like, who is mm. this? Yeah, it just know. It, it's actually we're trying to work on it's, it. It's a, a tough bit, one to but... break. I also feel like kind of boring when I'm just not swearing as much. I like to spice up my sentences a bit. Add a little flair in this there. This is going to go something, something. into one of our uh, segments we're going to have with you about Canadian or is it just Jared? It's, oh, uh, there's going to be a part like of it about swearing. Don't worry. Yeah, how is being married to a Canadian? What's like the other side Renee, of that? Renee, we'll get to that. <laughs> okay. I mean, that's going to be part of our segment, <laughs> Canadian <laughs> okay. or just Jared. So give, I can't wait. Give me the one thing. So you started in the industry at what age? I was, um, I mean, I started like auditioning and stuff like that, like, of around 18, 19. Okay. So, but then I was like broad, like I had my first broadcasting on national television job at 23. So I think it's awesome to, you know, when like younger girls or guys or whatever ask advice um, on, you know, if you yeah. could go back and tell your younger self something. I also think it's important to continue to solicit advice from people that I respect in the industry. Give yourself advice if you go back in time, the 18-year-old you or the 23-year-old you that you now know that you didn't know then. I would say be selective who you take advice from because mm. everybody wants to dole. Not everybody wants to dole a device, but a lot of times a lot of people can get in your ears and it doesn't mean that that person has the key to the castle. It doesn't mean that they know what is right and what's wrong. I remember early on in my career, actually, when I started doing the show in Canada about wrestling and one of the guys, one of the um, executive producers at um, TSN, which is like the bigger sports station in Canada, oh, yeah. was like, don't do wrestling. No one's going to take you seriously. And I was like, I don't really want to be taken seriously. Like, that's not what I'm trying to do anyway. Wow. So like, um, yeah, suck on that. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, I would just say like be, be, you know, find your people that you trust, mm -hmm. that you want to be the sources of people that you want to get information from. And of course, listen to people and like, you know, take things with a grain of salt. Not everybody always has the answer. There's no, um, you know, straight line of how you get somewhere. So stick to what you know and what you like. And I mean, you know, it's really just getting in that experience too and knowing what your yeah. voice is as a broadcaster, who you want to be and not letting somebody like really take the reins mm -hmm. away from you on that. I love that. I want to know about your marriage and what, you know, before you jumped on, Chris and I were talking about just life lessons, what makes it work. You married somebody that's in your field, mm -hmm. um, in your line of work. I you know, I'll be really candid. I, you know, that's frowned upon in my world and probably, I don't know your world too, but, yeah. um, I, <laughs> sure is. I used <laughs> to be so worried about it in my twenties and I did, I dated athletes. I totally did because where are you going to meet people? What I was else on the road do? for five 100%. to six days a week. And like, sorry, I, a normal Joe Schmo isn't going to understand my life going out here, going to totally. bars. And I would keep it really on the DL about yep. who I dated and 
yeah, whatever. They were interested in the same thing. And and then obviously I ended up marrying somebody in my line of work, not a sport I covered at the time, but you did. And and how was that? And and maybe fun stories from meeting John. <laughs> so when John and I first started dating, we kept it under wraps for like a good six months uh, before anyone like, re- and it's like kind of hard. I mean, we're always yeah, yeah. all together. We're on the road. We're at the hotels. We're in the arenas. Like it is not easy to like really sweep that under the rug. Um, the Did you thing- have an oh shit moment where somebody mm. caught you and you had to like play it off? Because I definitely <laughs> did in like a hotel lobby or something like that. Yeah, yes, I've had. Uh, yeah, there's two that come to mind. There's one. So like there's always like the TV hotel that like, yes, most people stay in. But a lot of times wrestlers will stay in like the other. They book their own hotels, their own. Do they? They don't book their own flights, but they will often book their own hotels. So I went and stayed at the hotel John was at. And one of the other wrestlers like pulled up. He's like in his rental car. And he's like, what are you doing here? (laughs) Why are you here? And I was like, (laughs) and I was so new at the time that I wasn't even like sure that I was like, oh, how do I handle this situation? That I was like, oh, I don't know. It's just a hotel. They booked me. That's right. He's like, yeah, okay. They sniffed me out so fast. Um, But I also remember another time. (laughs) John and I have been together for a while at this point, but. Um, one of uh, it was uh, JBL, who's like a legendary wrestler. His hotel room was right next to ours. And the next day, hey, girl. Like, hey I was next to your guys' room. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God, I just start sweating, like sweating that I'm like, not I mean, not even just on the like sexual level. Front, but I was like, mm-hmm. what were we saying? What oh, were we shit. talking about? That's yeah. happened before. It was definitely a bit of like a panic mode. But you know that moment when you're staying in a, obviously we all do, we're staying in a hotel with yes. colleagues and you're like, fuck, which room are they in? Because was I talking too loud yeah, to I my know. friend, to whoever on the phone? Like you got to, yeah. The worst. Oh my God. I know. Yeah. Especially if you're I'm like, very you have a couple about sips it. of wine and you're like, yep. just here we go. Taking a I deep literally dive. will tell someone the next day and not give a shit. I'd be like, okay, I heard and gross or <laughs> weird. I, I don't care. Like, it's just because they'll call my ass out because obviously this voice travels. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so when John and I first started dating, though, we did keep it um, to ourselves for quite a while. And then once the cat kind of got out of the bag and yeah, we've been together for a while. But John, so John really keeps to himself. Like when he is, he's like not the social butterfly. If you meet him, it's like, he's, yeah. He's yeah, he just kind of does his own thing. So when he people started seeing him and I hanging around, it was like weird to them because he talks to nobody. But him and I were always just like buddies. So, yeah, people were like something's going on here. And I was like, what do you mean? What are you talking about? Oh, he doesn't talk to anybody kind of except for me. Uh, So, yeah, people people figured out probably quicker than we thought that they did. Yeah, please. I need them all. I think we know why. What's been your secret of staying together? Any, you know. (laughs) (laughs) Listen, I I will say I really lucked out. John is um he's so <laughs> patient and I mm. can be a psychopath. Um <laughs> yeah, like I am like constantly like at 10 where he is like so mellow. He That's he's good. rational, he's not like that knee-jerk reaction where I'm the opposite side of that. Um, so I really lucked out that he's like so patient. Um, and I, I actually think it helps for us that we're in the same line of work, especially like wrestling such a weird world that like if you don't get it, I'm sure for the people that are married to people that are outside the business, so many people in wrestling are married to people within the business. Um, I'm sure when you're on the outside of it, it is nice to just like take a breather. But I find for us, it's nice. Like we understand. I understand yeah. the things that he's talking about. I get those ups, those downs. I know what that life on the road <laughs> is like. Um Mm. I always felt bad for like people whose wives like weren't on the road and didn't understand because I feel yeah. like you you often think that that life on the road is a lot cooler than it really is. Everyone always thinks it's, it's so glamorous and you're that. schlepping around. Exactly. So <laughs> and it <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's we're not, all just getting I, by. I, Totally agree with you. I mean, yeah, um, my husband, and I think what's good for me, and I think John knows this too, I, it, my husband knows my entire crew. I mean, he totally. was like really good friends with Joe and Troy. He knows all our guys behind the scenes. He yeah. knows the guys that I'm going to the bar yeah. with that yes. are walking me up to the hotel room and they know my nonsense. And like, exactly. if he ever needed to call them, they'd be uh, like, yeah, she's in a oh room. Oh my God. Has there ever been times like that too? Or like, <laughs> oh God. Yeah, I remember John coming in really late from uh because when we were with wwe and there's house shows so he would be doing like the live event shows i'd be at the hotel waiting for him to get there before we go do raw the next day 
Um, yeah, I remember him getting in late after me having a couple cocktails down at the bar and just like, Ooh, am I going to answer the door? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we at? But he knows all those guys. And the, I mean, he's honestly known most of the people that I was really tight with have known him even longer than I've known him. Yeah, so yeah, it's like, awesome. it, we're all just like a bunch of buddies hanging out. For all of you Renee Paquette fans, good news. There's so much to talk to her about that we are going to yeah. make this a two-parter. We cannot condense this conversation into one episode. So tune in next week for part two with Renee Paquette. Calm Down with Aaron and Carissa is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.